What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. I've got a bit of a pipage issue, I'm not sure what or where it's come from. You can see here I'm currently in the process of just sorting out a few cables and power cables to make them jump over. The sieves there, you can see the right hand set are working, the left hand set are not. So we're clearly not getting any, you can see the pipe is empty, so we're not getting any dirty water coming up to that side but we've got two pipes up above you can see they're going into those sieves three sieves so this is the main water tank this is our infinite water tank that's never going to run out so we need to better sort this and the reality is that we just make each pipe go to three sieves right so we get all six all six sieves running the most efficient they can be of course, you need to make sure that there is no likelihood of what else is going to be picked up. Now, I could do it. There's two ways of doing this. You can do it like I've done where I've done everything in one big tank and then you use the filters. But of course, at the same time, you can just actually move your geysers into their own rooms so that you only get one type of liquid and then you don't need the filters. But then you need multiple rooms, which is more complex. It's more building anyway, and that's what takes forever because remember them buildings are floating in midair so they have to slowly build the scaffold out or what is the ladders to then slowly build the walls and yeah it's quite time consuming so ripped out the old pipes we're not using that anymore anyway because that was coming from the liquid that was being swept from the bottom um, and we're going to break out this now so that it can go into both sides now, more efficient than this would have been to put one pipe into three, the other pipe into three, but at least if I do it this way, then I know that regardless of what is coming up, it is always being processed through six machines instead of three. The desalinators that are below obviously will get used when some salt or brine water comes up, which is in the same place, but either way, we're getting clean water, so it don't matter. Story system seems to be okay at the minute, working as intended, and by working I mean it's just storing everything we can. The base temperature is looking good. Actually, it's maybe a little bit cold, but it's fine. We can change the thermometers by a degree or two and that will over time make sense. This is a bit colder than I wanted because as you can see I did put some radiant pipes over it, but there's too many. I think one's enough. but. It does get off quite a lot of heat, especially when you're waiting for a print and it's doing the whole light thing to say that they're ready. That gives off quite a bit of heat, so just a tile there to keep that cooled down should be more than enough. They're all up and running now, though they aren't getting enough power apparently. No, because they're not wired up. Yep, yeah, that helps. Connecting the cables actually helps. When they're wired up, we should be then safe for anybody in the future getting the zombie spores. So up to the rocket, and as I said, it is working, that's stealing that bit of oxygen that we're collecting, but it's just very, very slow. This setup seems okay to me. You've got four beds, sorry, three beds, four chairs, a toilet. There's no morale boost per se off all of that, but it's enough for three duplicates to be reasonably comfortable anyway. But what I'm going to do now is steal a bit of this oxygen you can see from here just to speed up the process ever so slightly. And I will put in a automation. So the idea is that when the oxygen is backing up, i.e. the Atmos suits are full, it will then send the surplus to the rocket. If they are not full, it will block the rocket and send it to... Well, nowhere. It will just block it delete that because they couldn't reach that middle section there we go so from the last episode i mentioned about the farm the the progress that we want to make or the the, the big upgrade i want to do which is above this now new uh, atmo station uh, i want to build the farms now to do so it will technically block them from going to the right there is no exit now to the right of the base so I am going to rip all of this out and redo it ever so slightly. I want the transit tube loader where they get in and out to be right outside the door, which is where I'm currently making it like so. 
Then it'll be linked into the transit tubes as normal. But I want one to go up and over where them toilets are, straight over the top there, and connect to that one on the other side of the right of the screen there. Because all of that and the toilets will be taken out in time and replaced for farms. And at that point, there will be brick walls that they won't be able to get through. So effectively, what they're, doing, they're going to do is go into there and they'll, they'll fly through the transit tube going through one of the farms. I don't think it's going to affect the crops. We'll have to wait and see when we get there. As long as it's not low enough that the crops can't grow, I don't think it matters at all. There's no heat from them, to my knowledge. Uh, but that is, again, a future plan. We need to take it slowly just to make sure that we're not missing out on the other things. I think we have a reason, reasonably decent sort of set up now for the tubes there's one going even over here again remember this building is automated uh, as per one of the comments and thank you for that the over complication of me wiring in the carbon dioxide from the top of the map down uh, you just recycle it back into the room now it does use up the carbon dioxide the plants of course use it so it will eventually run out so i still needed that setup but instead, I just have an, I can set up an automation to allow it to send down carbon dioxide when needed. But the advantage to that is the carbon dioxide that you're using and just keep recycling means that you're not wasting any of the spores, the zombie spores. And we're doing well for lime now. We are using the fossil, uh, turning that into lime. Still, the steel is not fully up and running because I haven't got around to sorting out the liquids there. You can see that room there, but that is the other metals room which i think is only making tungsten uh, i've turned off copper iron uh, co cobalt and gold i believe uh, because we've got volcanoes for them so i'm trying to keep the ore as much as possible plenty of transport tubes all around the base now giving them access to Anywhere they need to go much faster. There is a zoom out view. You can see from bottom to the left side. It's totally clean to the right side there as well. We do now, or at least I do now know, there is an end to the right, uh, but there is also a big gaping hole. When we take off with the first rocket, it will actually unlock that, so we'll see it. But there is a get big gaping hole, so to the right is uh, not much more that we can do in terms of digging without going into the vacuum of space again, or space exposure as it's called. Do we need any more people? Duplicants, not sure. Do we need any more eggs? I mean, for Drekos and for the Hatchers, it's always a good idea to keep them going as best you can. Uh, but what I'm going to go is for another duplicate. Now, all I'm looking for, I'm, I purposely don't pick duplicates that fart frequently because I really hate it when you get natural gas all inside your base. Uh, it makes a right mess. So... As long as they don't have that debuff, I really don't care that much. Um, if they can't dig, then I'll probably skip them as well because everybody needs to be able to dig at some point. I don't want to have to worry about who I'm sending to random planets that can't dig. So, fixing that bathroom because apparently I missed a toilet and a sink. Should be five and five. Nice and clean up there now, though. Looking good. And finally, putting in the range cooker, which uses natural gas, which we have plenty of, and a bit of electric to cook the end game items, which of course are one, to unlock the hermit, the guy in that little hut at the top of the map, but also just for giving you huge morale boosts for your duplicates, sort of eight, 10, and 12 morale just from eating specific types of meals. Now, a lot of the stuff we will need to grow specifically. Uh, I'm not doing a fish farm, so we're not going to be doing like surf and turf or the fish fillets. Because I don't like using, I don't like doing the fish to be honest. They always seem to disappear. So we'll probably go for like the mushroom things as I've said. Like the mushroom wrap or the mushroom omelette. And I think there is, I can't remember now, but the... <clears throat> With the mushrooms, the lettuce, and the gristle berries or the bristle berries that are cooked, it makes a decent meal. Uh, any other ones require the pincho peppers as well, which are the things that you grow upside down in chlorine, which is a bit more complex because they require a lot of heat as well. Now, I can do that, but I just need to do it out the way. Uh, I may give that a go. 
But let me know what your foods you use are, what your preferences are. If you've not tried them before, what you want to see, and I can show you how to do it. It's not a problem at all. Okay, so no more wasting time. Let's get these guys over to the second asteroid. The rocket is ready. It's charged. It has everything it should have. Oxidizers filled, water's filled, oxygen is filled. So let's get some, and I say it's got these things, it hasn't, clearly, because it says there the oxygen tank's not been done. So this is the one that I didn't realise it needed oxidizer, so we can jump ahead to get that fitted, it's not a problem. And we'll have to take out two of the critter tanks, though, we don't need them anyway. While I'm fixing that, just as a, an, a, a warning, the lab, the meteors are quite brutal. They will break pretty much everything on the surface, as you can see, there's one, boom. Um, now that was only uh, tungsten, but still tungsten and it just damaged it one hit. This is where you'll need to use your steel and use the bunker tiles to stop them from breaking through. They've also just broke my satellite there as well. So the meteors are no joke. You can build the me meteor shooter which shoots them out the sky, but we haven't got there yet. So yeah, just be warned. I'm just waiting for the oxidizer now to be built as you can see. There we go. And then it just needs to be fueled with fertilizer because we have no oxalite. That's better. Oxidizer is now full. So we have full fuel, full battery, full power, full solar panel. We have the duplicates that we want to send. We, of course, need them to get the rocket platform now built. We've had the discussion before. They've dug their way out. Clearly, they've had quite a few meteors, though, because that's why all the ladders are broke. So we need these guys to jump up there, get these ladders ripped out of the way. Get the rocket platform built. And then make sure we've got ladders that the duplicates can actually leave the rocket. Once that's done, then it's a case of uh, increasing the size of the base. They can, of course, do all of that while the guys are flying through space at great speeds. Uh, because they are like a, a couple of cycles away. So we'll send them on their way. Bon voyage. And there it goes. The first rocket launch of the season. And successful, I might add. A lot of heat coming out there. But because it is the vacuum of space, you can see it's immediately being deleted. It still manages to get through the floor for some really random reasons. I've never understood that. But it doesn't matter. So that rocket is now on the way. And I believe there's four duplicates on it. And we're going to be landing on this pad as soon as it is finished. They are working tirelessly to get this done, but they are struggling. They have no Atmo suits. They having to hold their breath. They are in the vacuum of space um, and walking through hydrogen, which is obviously not pleasant on the eyeballs. So they are suffering a little bit, but we have no choice. I'm just gonna put a bit of floor in there because I'm not sure if it's required because it is kind of floating. That's built. It doesn't seem to care about it floating, but we'll get them built anyway. It's not the end of the world. But that's now built, so that means we can land that rocket as soon as it arrives. No problem. Now we need them to jump on the base and increase the facilities, both toilets, beds, and seating for eating, because this, they're going from two to, I think, six. I'm going to put a airtight lock here to stop any of the oxygen from the base escaping into the, I keep saying atmosphere of space, the void of space. And now it's time to shut down a crap ton of ladders scaffolding with a crap ton of dig commands. Once they are down, we'll concentrate on getting the base built up, like I say, to support the extra people. It looks like there's another guys are there, maybe a good one we can steal. Um, and from there, we can then just leave them alone and, unless they obviously have some dramas that we'll have to step in and deal with. We can teleport somebody back in an emergency, one person back, but then it's like a three-day timer. However, there will still be enough fuel on the ship to send everybody back all in one go should we need to um, with enough oxygen and water and stuff on there and food definitely to keep them alive for that journey to get them back home. So even the guys that are on here in a case of an emergency, we can send them home. Now I want to dig down as well, but I don't want to dig any deeper into the beehives or the beta hives because I need to learn that myself and another geyser. I've not dealt with them before. All I'm aware of is you provide them with uranium and they give you enriched uranium. I definitely am going to try that. I'm not sure if the beta hives or the bees or whatever it is, if you even see them, if they can be 
taken home or if they have to be left here. If they have to be left here, then that may be the only thing that remains. Um, when I, what I did notice was if you dig out the tiles from underneath the beta hive, it damages it. So I need to make sure that I don't dig that part out. But we're not going down there yet anyway, so it doesn't matter. And there is the beginning of the extra floor. So I've just chucked another floor up top. Enough there for beds and maybe toilets. You could just throw them in anywhere willy-nilly. That would work too. But remember that if you have four bedrooms, that's four morale. So it does matter. Um, and that's why I'm trying to do it. Now, I'm not doing that because we haven't got time to build four separate bedrooms yet. Uh, but you can see that is five beds there. We already have, I think, two below. Banhi is having a rage moment again. Now, it looks like she wants to beat everybody up, but the anger is her getting to a point. If she gets to 100%, she will, of course, start smashing walls. Here are the guys coming over. One, two, three, four, that is. Yes, four. Travaldo, Hassan, Rowan, and Lyra are on their way over. No specific skills selected for them per se, uh, just a random bunch of people that can all dig because that's the job that I want them to do. And now for some extra bathrooms as well just to make sure they're not suffering there. I'm not bothered about the sinks necessarily, that is just wash the hands, but meh. All I need to do is make sure that they're not going to crap themselves uh, in awkward places. Now, the plumbing's already done, as you can see. That comes from and to the original asteroid. So, just connect it to it, and boom. Okay, so it's looking like they're arriving. You can see by the scaffolding thing building on the rocket, and there they go. Down, and that's going to melt a lot of that ice, because that's a lot of heat coming out there. But, of course, we still need to get a platform to them. And I forgot to put that in. So let's get a ladder up to that. We only we only care about the capsule to allow them to get out of the rocket. They may or may not be able to build from there. I don't think they'll have any resources on them, of course. But all they need to do is get across there, and then they can follow that down into the base. But we will need the guys in the base to help because they'll need to provide the resources that they are fast asleep at the minute. There we go. They're actually helping build. The guys below are bringing the resources, and then the guys in the shuttle are building. Just the last few pieces. There we go. Now it's very hot here, so they need to get the crap out of there. I need to turn the ship to grounded so they won't go in it. Uh, that should force them all into the base, and then I can hopefully lock the door to stop anybody from coming up here because there's no reason for them to. So there we go. Grounded. That blocks all of the seats, chairs, uh, toilets, bathroom, sink, beds, etc. And then these guys, these guys need to get down there. And we now have six duplicates on this asteroid they are immediately getting involved in helping out doing various different jobs the guys obviously that have been here for a while are immediately on the massage tables Lyra for some reason has decided to stand in the most dangerous place in the world and just gone and has she killed herself no she's unconscious now forgive me i didn't think this through i could have rescued her quite easily but i couldn't remember at the time how you rescue people and you need a med bay now i didn't get the med bay done in time so of course and unfortunately the inevitable happens you can see her there finally falling down dropping dead whoops so we've gone from six to five people but it's fine we it happens I guess. I mean, probably not for you guys. <laughs> but I always manage to kill the odd person. Duplicate. It's just one of them things. Usually it's because I've forgotten something. That instance, it was I've forgotten that that cot was needed. Um, now, I could have built it before they even got here, but I wasn't expecting anybody to stand in the heat. She killed herself by just standing there like an idiot. That's not my fault. Um, but yes, I could have fixed it. But to be honest, mm, never mind. With them now sorted though we can hopefully get them working now they are, of course are going to finish off the tasks in the base that require finishing uh, any of the jobs and chores that were being dealt with by the various other 
Duplicants will now be established, but they will start digging out as well. Now, it is going to be a slow process. It's going to be slow mainly because they can't breathe. So, in all the areas where they're going to be digging, it's carbon dioxide. Um, I did think about giving them gas masks, but we'll see what the future holds, and the future holds more issues, if I'm honest. So, for now, we'll just leave them be. As long as they are working less hours than the other planet, which they are, I've turned down for the, any other planets because they haven't got as much uh, specialities or morale boosting things. I basically turn their workload down so they don't have to work for as many hours. In the meantime, we'll throw another rocket because that one on that asteroid is going to remain there so that they can be evacuated should they need to be. And we'll build another rocket because we have the resources to do so for the next thing we want to do which is likely to explore a totally different asteroid when we unlock them though for now we are at time so i am going to end the episode here thank you very much for watching if you like the video please click like and a comment so welcome as always subscribe for more take care goodbye